Hello everyone, Pally Time here. Welcome back to V Rising. Hope you guys are doing very well today. I told you that next time you saw me, our castle was gonna look a little different. Let me give you a quick tour. We've reinforced all of those wooden walls with these thick ass stone walls to help protect us. We have these massive doorways now instead of the smaller wooden ones. Where we're standing right now, I've been calling this the rat room because if you go over to the vermin nest, if you add, um, grass like fiber plant fiber as well as bones it will just attract rats i don't know what the purpose of that would be i'm sure i'll find out soon but I, you know i didn't want that getting into my bedroom so we'll keep them back at bay this is where I'm intending on sleeping. However, we need to get some more of that bone dust that we were going after in the last episode. I was attempting to do that in the graveyard and I ran into an enemy that absolutely demolished me. By the end of this video, I'm gonna get revenge. Uh, no, I won't. But we'll do it soon. If we continue this way, this is our main crafting hall. You can see the sawmill. Oh, Holly logged in and played with me for a little bit. Uh, you can see the sawmill, the tanneries, everything set up for crafting that we know of so far. And then I have a big open space here on the right that we might fill out with... Uh, I saw that there were stairs. So if we can have a second story, uh, this might be the place that I set those stairs up. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Remember, if you do, please be sure to hit that like button. We're going to be doing a lot of combat today because I need to get stronger. Much stronger. This is the guy who killed me. Nicholas the Fallen. Oh, and he even gives a study. Use it to uncover new technology. All right, Nicholas. Your days are numbered. But first, I have a few more enemies to take down. Rufus the Foreman, a lieutenant of the bandit forces charged with looking over the logging camp. Just because he's an expert woodworker doesn't mean he doesn't know how. That's a double negative. Doesn't mean he doesn't know his way around a crossbow. He didn't rise up in the banded ranks for nothing. Well, it doesn't look like Nicholas was too far from our home, or Rufus, excuse me, was too far from our home. I am going with the long distance chaos bolt as well as the freezy spell we got from that archer early on. I was hoping the freeze could help me lock down targets like this foreman. Oh, he just threw out a net and caught me. That's kind of scary. Hits me for 21 damage as well. Luckily for us, we are out leveling this guy, but that's not going to be the case for every person we go after. Saw a lot of your comments saying I'm missing out on sustain by not auto attacking after I do that. That dash so I'm gonna try to work those in a little bit more but sometimes you know just getting away from danger is its own sustain let's all keep that in mind too four men at about half health moving in for the big hits now sword doing good damage but oh he was just ahead of me with that spin we couldn't quite connect it does seem like he has a lot of health even though I'm 10 levels above him it seems like he's eaten this damage pretty well uh, we're gonna have to do a oh i was gonna go for a bite execute to get out of that snare but it didn't work out did you just call in for more backup i believe he did rufus oh i think he got health back with his little charge there he like did a little battle cry almost it looked like okay we just dodged that net the ads are starting to look a little low here too rufus taking that damage over time and we finish him off Always. I knew it was gonna end this way. What do you got for me? We have unlocked Blood Rage. Shield yourself and nearby allies for 110% of your spell power and increase their attack speed. Wow. By 20%. So it's like uh he just shouts. And then everyone gets more sustain and more damage. That seems really good. Yo, for real, you know what I think this will actually be really good at? I'm not even trolling. This is this is genuine. Get out of my way, bud. Oh, actually, a woodcutter. Hello. Perfect. 
Uh, if we're using the copper axes, we get a new ability called Frenzy. It increases our attack speed after we use that ability. We can maybe stack that with the battle shout we just got. <laughs> and cut trees even faster. Here we go. Now we're talking! Oh, I need to get back home. For killing him, we actually unlocked the woodworking bench as well as the fishing pole. Why do vampires need to fish? In a painting frame. Interesting. Interesting. Next target is going to be Gore Swine, the Ravager. A mad cult is too far gone to be really intelligible. The malevolent being they serve pushes them to desecrate all things with little regard for practicality. They wear a rotten pig's head as a decorative mask. Oh no, it's another graveyard. Well, the skeletons in here don't look anywhere near as imposing as the ones we fought before, but Lydia the Chaos Archer is following me in. Is she gonna stop to fight these skeletons? No, she saw one side of them and literally turned and ran. Oh, maybe I spoke too soon. Lydia, balls in your court. If you wanna follow me up here, we can do this. And it looks like we are. <laughs> Gore Swine is here. Let me try to zoom in and get a look at him. He's also being followed by several different summoners as well. Oh, and I still have the attack speed increase ability. That was not on purpose, but we will make the best of it. Oh, stunned in the corner. We're okay. Swapping over to the blade. We're going to have to take down these summoners first before we do anything else. Lydia! There needs to- I need a Chaos Archer this way! Quick! <laughs> maybe they'll get dis- Oh no, I can't heal here. I was gonna say, maybe they'll get distracted for a quick second. We're turning this into a much more complicated battle than it needs to be. But look at that AoE in the corner, not bad at all! Gorswine and Lydia do seem to be in the same corner now. Yes, Lydia is going after the undead here. Uh, let's give ourselves that. Oh, attack speed increase. Take down the summoner. Perfect. Big spin there as well. Staying on this guy. Lydia has fallen back, it looks like. It's just me and the skeletons now. Another blood rage, but actually I can't push forward, so. Oh, and they're summoning in, mo in more of the normal skeletons that we've been fighting. Let me fall back for a moment. Oh, big damage coming our way as well. Uh, maybe I can, I can find a quick second to heal back here, but that's not looking too good. Moving through. Good grouping there. We were able to take them down. Good. Dashing back in, we were able to siphon a little bit of health off of him there. Dodging that attack as well. And I hit the summoner. We're going to have a lot less adds to deal with now. Uh, I'm going to try to break off. Head back up to the top and get some healing because it might take him a little while to get up here. Now, I don't know if this counts as still being in combat if I do something like this. So we may not increase our maximum health. No, we do not. We're only getting a small bit of healing. Okay, well, let's make this count then. That's another summon, I believe. Here's my battle rage going in with the sword, chipping away at this guy pretty quickly, actually. Could go ahead and dash out of there. I know I could have hit him to heal, but not when he's doing that much poison on his body. Uh, wow, he's actually like totally blocked off the stairs here. It is nighttime now. Not that that matters because we were in a graveyard. Uh, where did he go? Teleported away and now is barraging this area with poison. You're kind of getting out of your graveyard, my dude. Big damage. We're at half health. We are actually... Ugh, we're going to need to run. But we'll come back. Let me also swap out that ability for... I'm not going to take Aftershock. I think the Freeze would be good. Two single target damage abilities to nail this guy down. Oh, I hear him. He's on the road. He's actually moving to fight local bandits. But just as I healed, so did he. However, I think the odds are a lot more in our favor this time because he doesn't have that undead army 
protecting him. It seems like you, this is a battle of the spell slinging now. Ooh, let me just make sure I move out of that. He is limiting where I can move by putting these areas behind me, but we'll just keep pushing into him. I'm not afraid. Good spin to win damage there. That was actually adding up really quick. Gorswine is at half health as he teleports away to try to get to safety. Another solid hit there in the corner. I have another spin to win, ready to go. What are you doing right now? He's immune to damage. This is just an avoidance phase. Look at this. He blocked off the entire road. I, oh, but luckily he came to me. <laughs> Decent hits with the dot ability. We have a great opportunity to get in for some damage here as well. Gorswine's health is falling quickly as he teleports again. Where did he go this time? To the other side of the poison clouds. And he's full on channeling that massive AOE again, keeping me at bay. Looks like some wolves actually getting into the fight, but immediately meeting their demise. He nails me with that spell. I'm gonna, oh, I was gonna try to dash in for a healing hit, but I wasn't able to do so. Just a couple more attacks and this guy is good as dead, but he's a little too far. Oh, and now immune again. I'm gonna back up a lot off the road to the side because he's kind of putting these under my feet as I'm going. So if I can get them away from the main path I need to travel, that could be good. Nail him with a frost bail, hit him with another one. And that's gonna do it. Give me that blood. I'm coming to hell. Go swine has been defeated. What's our new power? I bet it's that poison that he has. Is that unholy? Corpse explosion. Raise a bone pile from below that explodes, dealing 125% magic damage and applies a fading snare that lasts for one second. We also got the veil of bones. Dash towards input direction and elude nearby attacks for 2.2 seconds. Your next attack launches a projectile that deals 25% magic damage, bouncing to up to four targets and, ampli and inflicts amplify that increases damage taken. Wow. Okay. All right. I'm interested in these. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Our corpse explosion is much more responsive than his. That's pretty good. And the dash looks the same as our other one. Leaves a clone behind, but then enemies would take increased damage. Very cool. So for killing him, we unlock something called a tomb. Put flowers on this tomb to raise various undead and then slay them for their remains. I wonder if that's a way we could actually farm out bone dust in relative safety. That might be a good idea. We also get Nocturne's fences as well as a couple recipes as well. Probably four of the tomb. Next target is Grayson the Armorer. The working arm and logistical mastermind of the banded forces, Grayson is the backbone of their operation. As their quartermaster of a band of chaotic outlaws, murderers, and thieves, he's the stern voice of reason that keeps their gang well-fed and well-equipped. I think this is the place. Doesn't seem like it's going to be the easiest area to break into, so let's... Try to treat it with some respect. Corpse explosion on these guys. We're going to dash in for an early melee attack as well and then spin back out. I really like our current spell setup. One benefit of the corpse explosion is that it's actually targeted on the ground. Hold to equip armor. You think it's better? Oh, invulnerable. Holy crap. Whoa. Oh, I can't actually attack right now, though. A little less exciting. The fact that I can target this spell on the ground means that if we were fighting the summoners from the graveyard, for instance, whose entire strategy is to fill the screen with enemies to block your spells, we could simply bypass that and go directly to the source and take them down. I don't think I'm going to be consuming that buff. Okay, well, we've managed to fight our way through the front door. 
Some enemies off to our right. The corpse explosion only going to catch one, unfortunately. It is a level 26 Deadeye and company, though. Let's do some quick spins on these dudes to see if we can take them down before we focus our efforts on the Deadeye. Quick bite into a dash to avoid that projectile. The corpse explosion just misses. You know, I could just wait for this person to uh, actually sit down to fire their arrow shot. And I think we could catch him every time. Or, predict it perfectly. <laughs> Bro, the combat in this game is so enjoyable. It is just so good. Is this a prisoner? <laughs> yeah, because you were so much better off before. Right, of course. Yes, fear the vampires, of course. Well, I believe that's our guy. I'm looking around and I don't see anyone here to reinforce him. So let's go. Grace in the armorer. Big damage to start things off here as well. Caltrops. Wait, what if we equip the armor and then run over all of these caltrops to break them? Is this the boss strat? <laughs> that's kind of cool, man. I don't know. I don't know if that's actually what I'm supposed to be doing or not, but it seems smart. Uh, he is. Oh, he's able to actually send out multiple hammers. This looks like a spin attack that I want nothing to do with. He summoned in some archers to help him in battle. Ooh, the hammer throw also pulls enemies in. He has a stitches hook. Okay, I'm grabbing the armor again. Just in time. Let's clear out at least this area. I don't really care about the other side. I just want to make sure I can continue to fight over here. This is neat. This is super cool. Okay, so those do five damage and slow. If we are unlucky enough to be hit by them. Big dodge there using our whirlwind to actually get around him. Dashing in to try to heal a little bit here as well. Corpse explosion does hit as well as our chaos damage bolt. Caltrops again. Okay. I'm going to try to move to this armory station. I imagine I'm protected from sunlight too, right? Maybe I should just try to clear out everything around this armory stand since this is where I'm going to be hanging out soon. Okay, it's done. Hit him with one Chaos Bolt, Corpse Explosion under his feet, and we're going to spin to win on top of him here. That was huge damage. Uh, bolt's going out as we fall back. We're going to instant execute his archer friend and dodge through that ability. Spin behind him as he's winding up. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. I was almost there. Give me that food. Yes. Wait, you went back into your fucking cell? Hello? <laughs> Lady, I literally freed you. <laughs> Please. Our next target is a putrid rat? Farmers try to be diligent in keeping their pest problems under control, as legend says that any place too infested might find themselves visited by a putrid rat. No one is quite sure how they get in, but they know it by the stench of rotting flesh and its carnivorous appetite. So if a place is too infested with rats, the plague rat will spawn. Okay, that's interesting. Let me grab a little grass out of storage, and I have some bones sitting around here somewhere. Head over to the rat room and put a little bit of each of these inside, and it'll start attracting rats. <laughs> well, I mean, we got a few now. All of the machines just turned off at the same time. Did they output? Is it full? They've all hit max capacity, I think. I accidentally picked up one there. Oh, it's a recipe. Oh. Well, <laughs> now I just have a bunch of rats. We'll save Putrid Rat for later.
Next, we have Clive the Firestarter. An unparalleled genius in the explosive arts. Unfortunately for Grayson, this chaotic psychopath is far too powerful to get rid of at providing and mixing destructive materials. He'll burn down his entire camp just to take you with him, laughing all the while. Well, this looks like the place. We're uh, getting pretty far off the beaten path here. Look how far I had to travel from our castle just to make our way over here. Dang. It does look like they have a pretty big security flaw, which is this cliffside right here. If I could jump down into their base and avoid pushing through the entrance, that'll save me a bit of time. I guess if is kind of the key word here. There we go. Okay, looks like we have some spearmen up ahead. Decent hit. Oh, these guys are starting to get kind of high leveled. But our damage is still looking pretty good. My sword was starting to get damaged, so I'm going in here with a mace this time. We do have the ability to kind of lunge forward with it, dealing damage. Uh, so we might be able to use that to actually gap close out of some stuff as well. But it looks like this is our target already. He moved out of my corpse explosion, but does get hit by the dot bolts. That's an easy move out of that, but those bombs actually shatter into smaller bombs as well. So we're going to have to think on our feet quite a lot. Speaking of which, I think he's going to stop there. Not quite. Nighttime is here, which is very good for us. I'm going to go for an execute bite on that person. I just saw their percent. It was like 80. That could have been so good. Oh, my God. Corpse explosion is set down, and it does connect as well, but my melee attacks following up do not. He's dancing circles around me right now. Okay, big fall back with our dash here. Nailed him with that. I'm actually dealing with this guy's abilities better than most enemies I've fought today, I feel like. Maybe because he's just literally trying to avoid me. Although we do have some ads coming in right now. I'm going to focus my attention on them going in with the hammer slam and making sure I'm out of that gigantic bomb that's about to fall as well. Corpse explosion on the archer. I think she's going for a shot. It does connect, but I'm kind of forced to kite back this way at the moment. Now, remember, we did not clear anything out behind us, and we need to be very aware of that as we're moving through. Good hits, good hits, good hits. Okay, and no more ads coming up that I can see right now anyway. Corpus Explosion does connect. Here's our bolt as well. Clive is under half health. Shit, another archers. I'm going in for melee hits on them. We are going to have to really start to worry about our HP soon. Oh, and I can't go that way. I literally cannot go that way. I would die. We might be able to sneak a heal if the majority of these guys are preoccupied because he's not oh god super aggressive with his attacks it's mainly the ads are that are the problem oh no corpse explosion on the corner oh no oh no oh, no now, unfortunately, because I died in here, I'm kind of worried that... Oh, there he is. Kind of worried that I lost my other bag of stuff at the graveyard. That I was doing this whole training montage to get back. But I guess time will tell. Well, lucky for us, it's just me and Clive this time. No other ads to speak of. And if I can keep catching him with the corpse explosion, he's not going to last very long at all. I wonder if his explosions can hurt him. I guess that just answered that question as he walked out of that massive one without even a scratch. Big roll from Clive to dodge my corpse explosion. We'll just keep nailing him with the dot, though. Dashing in and hitting him with that bolt would be pretty helpful, too. So far this time around, I haven't taken any damage at all, but I guess I spoke too soon as we just got hit. Corpse explosion underneath his feet. I'm going to follow that up with a hammer slam, but I did miss. Dashing out, we do hit him with the projectile this time. Clive already at half HP, and he's kind of fighting himself into a corner here. But come to think of it, maybe that's what he wants with his big area of effect abilities. Okay, dash out, we're good. Send that bolt right back at him, though. Perfect. 
Now that does make him more vulnerable. I should try to deal more damage while we see that green debuff on him. Just kind of hard. Just kind of hard sometimes. I'm going to slide forward here just to try to hit him with the debuff, but he moves out of it. This is like a battle of the dodges right now. Hold on, corpse explode that. Dash attack two. There it is. There it is. Now hit him with the dot. Does that make the dot deal more damage with every tick? That would be so good if that was true. You're leaving a lot of stuff down there, Clive. Nailed him. Corpse explosion. Got it. Ah, oh, he just rolled. Ouch. Big hit for the bomb. We just took 50 damage. Woo. This guy was... This guy was chaotic. His description was pretty accurate. So, did he give me a new ability? I guess it wouldn't be under Frost, would it? Oh, I think we also got a new ability from... Actually, I'm not, I'm not seeing... Oh! Crimson Aegis. Apply shield to a target ally or self that shields the target for 200% of your spell power. Knocks back enemies uh, when the shield is applied. I'm not sure if I got this from this dude or from the other one that we took down before. I kind of forgot to check after. Well, he's been demolished. I'm going to make my way back to the base. I'm really scared we lost our other bag. But ultimately, my training montage is still gearing up for me to get revenge in that graveyard. We've been at this well over an hour now, but this was super fun. This was super duper fun. We'll head to the graveyard next episode. Wasn't trying to clickbait you, just uh, underestimated how challenging this would be. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button. Next time you come back, the base might be a little different. And we should be back in a couple days.